We need 1000 Hertz monitors. Okay, need is a strong word. What I mean is you should want a 1000 Hertz monitor, at least for gaming anyway. Now, you're probably quite rightfully confused. I mean, Asus has that 500 Hertz monitor. Is that not good enough? Games don't run uh, more like well, the maximum that you ever see is like 300 FPS in titles like CSGO, so why should you want a 1000 Hz monitor? Well, let me explain. When most people think about high refresh rate displays, the majority of, well, actually for the last decade or so, the general discussion has really been from moving to from 60 Hz to 144 Hz. We've talked a little bit about going from 144 to 240 Hz, but as even I have said, you really can't see a difference between 140 Hz and 240. It's hard to feel much of a difference at all, so for most people, it's just not worth spending the extra money that you generally need, and it's often relegated to the, the eSports pros and I suppose the aspiring pros as well. It's for pro players who want every last advantage they can get their hands on, regardless of cost. But there are actually advantages, and while it's still true that the average gamer doesn't need an ultra high refresh rate monitor, that doesn't mean that it isn't unequivocally better. The easier of the two benefits to explain is the latency advantage. Forgetting the end-to-end -end latency involved in gaming, like how long it takes for your mouse to register that you've clicked it, how long it takes for your PC to then draw a frame with that action in it, and how long it takes the monitor to process the digital data and turn it into analog voltages to make the liquid crystals in your LCD panel change colours. The actual frame time itself is a pretty big deal just all on its own. At 60 Hz, you see a new frame every 16.7 milliseconds, which means if, say, an enemy pops out from behind cover, it takes at least 16.7 milliseconds for your monitor to be ready to show you a new frame with that enemy in it. If your enemy happened to be gaming on a 1000 Hz display, running at 1000 FPS as well, they'd be able to see you for 15.7 milliseconds before you even started to see them. It would then take you another 16.7 milliseconds before you can even start to aim your mouse towards you and target them, whereas they can start targeting you instantly. At 240 Hz, like this AOC monitor, that delay drops to just 4.2 milliseconds, which is already the vast majority of the way to one millisecond or a thousand hertz, but the smaller that that time is, the lower latency you'll get and the better of an experience you'll have. The harder to explain benefit that comes from, say, a thousand hertz display, is a quirk of how our eyes perceive motion and how modern LCD and even OLED panels draw frames. Old CRTs were actually better in a lot of ways, with one of the biggest advantages being how little light is actually being emitted at any one time. CRT displays draw frames line by line and scan across those lines so that only a tiny trail of the image is actually being shown at any given moment. The majority of the display is actually black. And that means that your brain is receiving new parts of the image constantly, which is actually a good thing. If you compare that to modern displays, which are called sample and hold displays, well, they draw the entire frame almost instantly and then hold it still until the next frame is ready to draw. This basically means that instead of a, a steady stream of new information, like a CRT, LCDs hold the frame still and then show you a new one a few milliseconds later. The problem with this is how our brains perceive motion. If you take a picture of the UFO test with a really fast shutter speed, like this 1000 FPS footage, you'll see the UFOs get drawn almost instantly. But look at the same thing with your eyes, and you'll notice at 60 Hz, it will look like this. A blurry, smeary mess. So what gives? Well, in short, it's a quirk of our monkey brains, which means stuttery motion gets perceived as blurry. 
The less stuttery it is, the smoother and crisper it will look. If you have a higher refresh rate display, say 144Hz or higher, you can try this out yourself. Set your monitor to 60Hz and load up testufo.com and then follow one UFO with your eyes and track it across the screen and notice how blurry it looks. Now set it back to your highest refresh rate that it will do and look at it again. See how much crisper it looks? Now, you might have heard people like me talking about this before when talking about the Moving Picture Response Time, or MPRT. That's basically just how long the image is stationary for. On a 60Hz display, the image would be static for 16.7 milliseconds, at 204Hz it's 4.2 milliseconds, and at 1000Hz it's 1 millisecond. But then why do almost all monitor manufacturers claim a 1 millisecond MPRT time with their decidedly not 1000 hertz monitors? Well, as always, they cheat. Instead of actually drawing new frames every 1 millisecond to get that metric, they just turn the backlight off for all but 1 millisecond. So they flash the image at you, then turn the panel off, and then repeat. That does mean that the persistence of motion issues are reduced. With uh, backlight strobing enabled, you can expect much more, uh, a much more visu visually crisp and smooth image at the cost of your eyes and not actually getting new information when the display is just off. Now, I personally can't stand backlight strobing modes as I get headaches almost instantly looking at a strobing display, but Technically, it is there if you want to try it. If I'm being honest though, the argument for 1000 hertz monitors seems pretty academic. That is to say, pointless. At 500 hertz, you see a new frame every 2 milliseconds, which, while technically not perfect, is realistically plenty, even for esports pros. Sure, if we can get 1000 hertz monitors working and GPUs to drive that sort of frame rate, that's cool, but I can't say that I'm anxiously waiting their arrival. There are benefits to faster refresh rates, namely latency and persistence of motion, but there are a whole load of technical challenges in the way that we'd have to overcome. And if I'm being honest, the benefits aren't exactly game-changing. Still, that sort of information does apply to slightly lower refresh rate displays like 240, 360, and even 500 hertz displays, so hopefully this is a bit of a, hopefully some useful information as to why these displays exist, despite the fact that we can't visibly see a difference between them. If you're interested in these sorts of videos, do feel free to check out the plenty of other ones that are on the channel already, and hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I'd also love to hear your thoughts on 1000 Hz displays and just ultra high refresh rate displays in general. What refresh rate are you running right now? Otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to support these videos and me and the channel, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs that I made myself, or check out some of the affiliate links in the description down below. I'll leave a link to both the AOC monitor that I reviewed uh, last week, and definitely check out that video. I'll hopefully leave that in the end cards or uh, up at the top, whatever, uh, and a link to it in the description if you want to check it out, because it's an insanely cheap 240Hz 1080p monitor, so definitely take a look. Otherwise, that's kind of it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.